welcome to episode 18 of the Just Run podcast with me, Reese Morgan. And me, Nathan Marshall. Last week, we had sheep rescuing, rice crispy square loving ultra runner mm. Jacob Lambert. Uh, tune in to listen to his episode that dropped last Friday. It was great to hear all about his adventures. And uh, both Nathan and I are really excited to see what he's going to be doing next. On this episode, uh, we've got Grant Grego, and I'm sorry if I pronounced that right or wrong, I, I do apologise. Uh, he's an ultra runner and respected coach. Uh, Grant isn't short of experience when it comes to running, and throughout this episode, you'll hear all about his previous accomplishments, such as completing a double Ironman in Snowden and multiple 250 kilometer ultras, to name a few. We're super excited to chat with Grant about his current and future challenges. Tune in to hear all about his journey and his ability to stand firm and persevere through times of suffering. So let's dive into it. Grant, welcome, mate. Thank you. Thank you for having me. No, well, mate, thank you for coming on. Appreciate it. So just so, because I don't know, are you in London? Are you speaking from London? Yes. Yeah. London. Ah, nice. Fair. Fair enough, mate. Born, so, and, born and bred. Born and bred. The big smoke. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> A big smoke man. It must be tough running around London. Actually, is it um like are you central or are you have you got like any nice trail runs near you up there? The closest I have to me is Epping Forest. It otherwise, it's otherwise it's canals and it's extremely flat, which is very annoying. <laughs> so I have to I drive do. if if I if I want to get some hills in, I have to drive to Box Hill in Surrey, or sometimes I find myself going to Wales. If I want a little adventure, when you see a bit of sense, come over to you know. God's yeah, country, yeah. As some people say. <laughs> yeah, Wales has a funny way of absolutely breaking me though. Every time I go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does that to you. You, you. There's, yeah, it's not short of a few hills. That's for sure, man. That's for sure. But um. No, but I find myself. I keep going back. <laughs> <laughs> well, mate, knowing your character, and, and we're going to be getting into it in this episode. I. Completely understand that. I mean, I've only ever met you once, obviously, at the Big Moose event. And yeah. I know you through why we run and through Nate and everything. And uh, it was a pleasure to meet you at that awesome event. And I hope that we'll have a lot more uh, chances to meet up and run together in the future. But, I mean, um, for those people who don't know, obviously, just – I know you've probably done this before on a few other podcasts, but just um, – I hope you don't mind me asking and talking about it, but – just look from looking at posts on your Instagram and things like that. It looked like you used to live a very different lifestyle. Um, and so for those who are listening, just wonder if you can talk about kind of um, the path you're on now, how you got to it and a bit about yourself, mate, if that's all right. Yeah, I'll, I'll try not to ramble on too much. Um, but I used to be a few years ago, I used to be pretty overweight, um, always pick the easy route and just got comfortable, I guess, in a comfy life. Didn't really push the boundaries in anything. If everything got a little bit too hard, I'd sort of retreat back into myself. But I found that it wasn't leading anywhere. Like the weeks tick by, the months tick by, the years tick by, and you're only going in one direction, which is bad. And mm. I guess... I have a distinct memory of uh, struggling to tie my shoelaces uh, where I couldn't bring my leg up to, to my chest and I'd get out of breath. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. I actually cannot uh, live like this. And that was pretty much where it started. How big were you, Grant? I was 104 kilos. So about 16 yeah. stone. I was going to say, I, I don't do kilos. I had no idea what that was. So I'm glad you clarified. So you were about 16 stone. And yeah, that must have been one hell of an eye opener. Like not, you know, tying your laces and struggling to do that. I mean, that's definitely. And that's so at that point when you thought, I can't, I can't do this. I can't keep doing this. What did you do then? Like, what was the changing factor? Did you decide, fuck, I'm going to hit the gym or was it? putting the running trainers on and running or what was it that you did first to kind of make that, take that first step, so to speak? It was going <clears> to the gym, um, but it was hard for me because I've, when you spend so much time sort of 
self-conscious. You don't want to go out. You don't want to see anyone. You're worrying about what people are thinking of you. It's really hard to take that step. And even then, I found myself going backwards. So I would persevere for a few weeks. I'd have a little hiccup. And I would go back into myself, back into my sofa, back into the takeaways, and basically undo all the work that I'd done. Mm. And, and then I, I don't know, it was just perseverance. And it wasn't easy at all. But one thing I really found that was a huge help was going to classes. Mm. was meeting people, having conversations, listening to other people's stories. And I feed off of other people's successes and their energy. So when they've told me that they've run a half marathon at the weekend, I'm like, oh, what's a half marathon? Um, and they're absolutely beaming and they're really happy and, and full of life. It was like, oh, I'd like to feel a bit of that. So go home. Oh, there's a London Landmarks first ever half marathon. So it was a few months away and I managed to persuade my old man to do it with me. So we trained and it was hard to not run, lose some weight, but then that compounding effect it has on the body of someone of that size. But then as you persevered with it and found great joy in it, I finished the half marathon and was just sheer elation. Mm. But then it's, then you start talking to people that run half marathons and they're like, oh yeah, like oh, I've run marathon or uh, they're doing some other crazy challenge and you want to feel what they're feeling. So it's just opening your eyes to a world of possibilities and just curious mm. and cu I, find, I find that curiosity has got me to where I am today mm. just feeling what other people have felt and what they've gone through and putting myself in that position and just how do I feel how did, how did I feel doing that half marathon or that marathon Kind of need to eradicate the saying curiosity killed the cat, don't we? You need to get rid of that shit. It should be curiosity killed my fucking legs after a five-day ultra. Something like that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that's a good way of putting it, mate. That is a lot of people have been on here and said it in different ways. But yeah, being curious. I mean, I think that's what has led me and Nathan and a lot of the people on here and, and that we you know all three of us know is just seeing something and going. Well, that sounds like a bit of a bit of me, bit bit stupid, bit of me. Let's give it a go because I think there's too many people who I saw a saying the other day and I can't remember what it was, but it was something to do with um, not even trying it is worse than failure because at least if you you know if you failed, at least you've given yourself that chance to go out and do that thing. Whereas you can just you can be defeated at you know point A where you read it and go. I'm never going to do that. And that's it. It never happens. And you you never know what if. And it's such a, an interesting way to think about it, isn't it? Really? Yeah, it's like to, you have nothing um, to, oh, what is it? You have nothing to fear, but everything to gain. Mm. So by just by going out and putting yourself out there, and it doesn't have to be running, it can be anything. And this has helped me correlate running into everyday life where I've been petrified and overcoming that hurdle with having a mindset of I can't, like, yeah. oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. To, oh, I can do that. I can do this. And yeah. applying yourself mentally and physically into it and yeah. funny enough, I the closest to quitting has never been from running. Uh, for me, it was free diving. Mm. I had never felt so claustrophobic and in my own head of, I can't do this. Like, no, this isn't for me. I'm not doing it. So then taking a moment to 
just breathe and sit in them emotions and get to grips with yourself and flipping it like you can do hard shit mm. you've just come from a seven month training block for a, a double iron man into a 250k ultra marathon along the welsh coastal path this is nothing mm. this is just holding your breath and swimming yeah do you ever well, think you're going to die when you're diving though it's a big, I mean, free diving is extremely dangerous, mm. but so is everything. Nowadays, everything's dangerous, everything's going to kill you, everything's giving you cancer. You walk, every, everyone's driving too fast, there's maniacs on the road. So, one thing I've always said is like, if I'm going to die, I would rather die my way. Yeah. So if that's, I'm going on a skydiving holiday and my mum's having a panic attack, as she always does. It's like, look, if anything really bad happens, like, just know I died with a smile on my face. <laughs> because I would rather die doing that than someone take it away from me. Yeah. Is that, what's the scariest thing? I'm going to go back to actually the intro in a second, but what's, is that the scariest thing you ever did? Because I was going to bring free diving up because... I have been having a nosy through your Instagram. I mean, you've, <laughs> you've done some mental shit. You really have. You've done the skydiving, the free driving, the, the cycling, the running, everything you've done, the climbing various summits. If you had to say the scariest thing, it, what would that be? For me personally, it would be the free diving because, mm. I, because I'm petrified of drowning. Uh, it's mm. one of my biggest fears. Just like the sea, I'm... I'm petrified of it. So it was, okay, I'm going to go do my scuba diving lesson. I'm scared of heights. Okay, I'm going to apply myself and go do a skydiving lesson and stick with it. And now, I mean, I've got 170 solo jump skydiving, over 100 scuba dives, um, free diving qualified. Um, couldn't ride a motorbike. So it was, okay, I'm going to go do a motorbike license. And it's just overcoming these hurdles. And these disciplines that we feel as though we put these imaginary boundaries on them. But mm. they're only boundaries that we're applying to ourselves. Mm. And, yeah. and now it's just do everything, explore everywhere and just and do as much as you humanly can. Yeah. Before before you're old. And I want to be able to look back on my life and just be so proud of what I've done. Mm. When's your audition for James Bond? No, nah, no. Nah. Um, and where do you stop? Where do you stop? Uh, it's interesting. For me, there isn't an end goal. There, it's by so with the running as it's being in the best possible shape I could be for any given occasion. So if a friend wants to ring me up and, oh, I've got a 50K run planned, I haven't got to now go do a 12-week training block to go do a 50K. It's, I'll see you Saturday. Hmm. I'll be there. And that takes years of graft. Like, we don't just wake up one day and we can go run 50K. That's being disciplined for months and months and months and they're showing up for yourself even on the days you don't want to and mm. I take great pride in that and with stopping why? why stop? who says you have to? yeah that's always something I always say is uh, the saying uh, you don't stop training because you get old you get old because you stop training that's something I've heard and I, I love the saying because it's true. You see all these people who, even like people who retire and stuff, it's interesting. It's quite sad to see people who work in quite physical jobs uh, when they're working full time and then they get to retirement age and they decide to just stop and, and take a break in everything. And then their health deteriorates so quickly. 
And it doesn't mean that you've got to stop everything. Just because you're old doesn't mean you've got to stop going to the gym and everything. You can still do it. And yeah, it's it's all about, you know, living as long a life as you can, isn't it? And then when your time is up, you can look back and like you said, say, had a, had a bloody good innings. That's what it's all about, didn't it? Let's face it. So, yeah. Um, and we'd never know when, you never know when something bad can happen. Exactly. Yeah. And, Opportunity has come from running, for me personally, from signing up to races I never thought I was capable of, has brought opportunity. And meeting Lewis at Ultra X Wales brought opportunity to the first Why We Run. And what, the first Why We Run run broke me. into It shattered me into a million pieces. I hobbled on poles and used them as walking sticks to get me through to the finish line. I couldn't run for five months. I had to defer GB Ultras to this year. But opportunity in the chaos was Lewis sending me the application form for the double iron, man. Mm. And it yeah. was, yeah, okay, I can't run. I can't swim, so I need to learn how to swim in a pool. I can sort of ride a bike. I've got seven months. We've got something to work with. Yeah. And that is only, I think it was a blessing because I wasn't ready for GB Ultras last year. My running career had only been a year old. The body wasn't conditioned to it. The legs wasn't conditioned to that kind of magnitude. And by prolonging it a year, it's put me in the best possible position that I could hope have hoped for mm. yeah um going back just to the start there just obviously we asked about yourself and, and and the path that you chose and that you you were overweight and struggling and things how was how did that impact your mental health as well back then and coming forward now to where you are now like what can you talk about the differences i think Mental health is always huge. It's always been a huge part of my life growing up. And it follows me everywhere. It follows me everywhere. And back then, it wasn't it, because your appearance and your self worth is so low, other people see that. And you attract, I feel that you attract people that are like-minded or where you're at in your life correlates to where they're at in their life. And I was meeting a lot of people on the same sort of trajectory that I was on. And it was only on a downward trend. And I struggled daily. I, I took six months off work, couldn't face getting out of bed, Delved into Destiny on the PlayStation, Call of Duty, and it was my escapism from life that I didn't have to deal with. It was like, okay, work's giving me this opportunity to take time off, but I didn't use the opportunity to get better. I got worse. And then when I got, when I had to go back to work, I'd put on even more weight. So you was people in the route, in this depot, in this lifestyle, it's easy to ridicule when they're all moaning and they see someone who's suffering. But it's no, it's never a helping hand. How are you? How are you feeling? Do you need any help? It's, oh, look at this prat. Oh, didn't you go to the gym while you was off sick? Could have done something mm. about it. And And this doesn't have a positive impact on you as a person. It makes you feel worse about yourself. Mm. So after I had been back for a few weeks, I was then able to take another six months off work. And I did. I took another six months off work. I delved straight back into the PlayStation, into my pit, my misery. And there was nothing I could do about it. My life changed when I went self-employed and I left that environment. Because 
we can essentially be the product of our environment. If our environment's shit and our, day, our daily lives are shit, as soon as you change your environment, it opens your eyes to what's out there. I hadn't travelled. I hadn't done anything. It was, I was go to work, come on, go to bed, get up, fab it a PlayStation, go to work. And that was all I knew. That was all I understood. And as soon as I left and I went self-employed, my first year of going self-employed, I took 102 days off. And I went and travelled. Hmm. And I went and, and I went and got my skydiving licence. I went to China. And I met all these amazing people. And it was wow, my life doesn't have to be like this. And I was working sort of alone uh, amongst the small team. I hadn't quite sort of grasped the gym. I was still very much living off of my childhood achievements. Back in the day, I ran a mile for the school and I won. Back in the day, I was a Taekwondo black belt champion. Back in the day, I was in the air cadets. Back in the day, back in the day. And I lived off of that. Never of, because I had achieved nothing in, in the next 10 years of my life. And it was, that needs to change. And I need to start having achievements that I'm proud of now as a person and chasing it. Mm. The only, the only downside to that is sometimes the challenges can be ill fulfilled so you complete it and it's okay what's next what's next rather than sitting in that achievement and digressing it's very easy to get carried away mm. and it, now it's you still have days where you wake up and this oh, I cannot be bothered today like I do not want to do this shit but you know get up and do that shit and you feel better you will feel better personally because you've shown up for yourself. And that's all it is. It's just showing up for yourself day by day by day. Don't worry about a year. Don't worry about the next month. Just show up for yourself today. And what can you do for yourself today? Mm. And that's how I approach it. And I know that I'll feel better. And I made a promise to myself when I got injured um, at Wabi Run and I couldn't run for five months. I made a promise I would never moan about running again because I wanted to run so badly. I'd give anything to go run. And you, and you couldn't. And we, we can get really short-sighted where, oh, right, I'm back to running, and we forget what we've come from. And I'll always, today, if I've got a run planned, I'm just, yes, I get to go run today. Uh, and then I'm annoyed if I have a rest day. So I want to go run. Mm. It's interesting. How is, how is your running going this year, Grant? Because obviously you've got 400 mile races. I am struggling with the in-between. And I always knew that this was going to be an issue because I rely heavily on challenges, goals and in a weird sense, like I like digging myself a hole. I like digging and digging and digging into a pit that can I get through this? What's like, the, um, d the time difference between each race? They're all six to seven weeks apart. So literally you're, you're recovering and tapering and then the odd and week of running, again. yeah. Yeah, so the weekend just gone was probably my longest run which was 13 miles and the following week i had a four hour hike and that was go find a to go find a hill and walk up and down it for four hours <laughs> and that is that's essentially all i've done okay i say it's, it's all i've done but i've had some hour runs here and there um my longest run's been two hours but we get desensitized especially as ultra runners, when you're talking big distances, you, oh, it's only, it's only a half marathon. It's only a marathon. It's only 50 K. And I love volume. It keeps me occupied. It keeps me busy. 
So when you're, you've been told you can't run for 10 days minimum, and then the most you're going to go run is half hour, twice a week, then an hour the following week, you start climbing the walls. It's I need to scratch this itch. I need to get back into it. And it's I think it's hard because I finished Chester so well because I finished it feeling great. It was like, I want more. I want to capitalize on this feeling, but that's, it's not the case. It doesn't, it doesn't work like that. Um, no one recovers a hundred percent in six weeks. And I'm not really going to know how I feel till mile 40, 50 into Scotland. Hmm. I could finish Scotland battered, and then grateful that I've got seven weeks till the next ultra. Yeah. So you did Chester. What your next one is Scotland, is it? And then Scotland's the on the eighth of June. Then I got Brecon Beacons on the twenty seventh of July, and then I got Snowdon on the sixth or the eighth of September. Oof, that's the brutal places as well, and they as a what's the elevation like across the whole thing? So the Scotland's five thousand. Beacons weigh six and a half, Snowden six. Nice, tasty. <laughs> yeah. I actually thought it would have been more than that. Yeah, I was a bit disappointed. Um, but you see, you become desensitized exactly what you just said. You just listed four yeah. unbelievable runs. Like you're running 400 miles in however many months it is over some of the most iconic, difficult routes. And you both just went, oh, I thought it'd be more. No, I was disappointed. It's like, what? No, it's because yeah. <laughs> think of the Pegasus Slam and the, the elevation in some of those. And they're like yeah, only but... 30 miles. That's it's quite surprising that. It's a it's kind of surprising if you don't know. Like I know I like, obviously just from running around them how big they are, and you do think in your head it's gonna be more, but then I suppose still you've got to think where you've come from and what you're doing and um Try try not to become too desensitized with it because so, I can guarantee you when you're 60 miles into it or something and you got to hit you hit the hill like that you'll be like okay yeah I'm glad there's not more a hundred percent and I'm a big believer of ignorance is bliss hmm. don't worry about it and this paid me in great stead at Ultra X Wales so um, day four was our big day. It was 60 plus K and 6,000 meters. And I remember sitting at the briefing in the morning and everyone was panicking. And I was very new to ultra running at this point. This is my first multi-stage. I hadn't, I'd done the Jurassic Coast 100 K um, a few months prior. But even then, I didn't really think about elevation. And in the morning of this briefing, everyone's talking about its elevation and I was like, I don't really know what you're on about. And to be frank, I don't really care. Like, <laughs> what does it matter? What does it matter, this elevation that you're overthinking and overcomplicating? You've got to go up it. You've got to go up it anyway. So, so <laughs> what does it matter? Just face it when you're when you've got that hill in front of you and combat it then. Don't try and combat it at half four in the morning at breakfast. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You'll face that at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock in the morning. Because mm. when you start getting into that negative, yeah, if, once if you start it getting into you that much, it's, it's, it's going to just hinder the entire race. And then when you get to that point, you're going to be like, oh, no, it's here. Oh, shit. And I can guarantee that, you know, it's all mental, but physically that will affect you. You know, healthy mind, healthy body, all that stuff. You know, you'll start thinking, oh, i got a niggle in my leg coming, or is it because of this hill? And just like you said, it's, it's very difficult for some people to do. And I've done it in races where I've overthought things. And it's, I think it's a natural process. And part of the process of running, whatever distance it is you do, is not overthinking it. It's difficult. Like when you look at like the real, like multi stage events, and you look at these big Coca Dona and Dragon's Back and all these big runs. You know, these are some people, like a friend of mine who's done it. I mean, he had a folder. He had, it was, he literally said he was admin. He had down to the point, like he knew where he was going to be running, what the elevation was, the turns he'd be making and where not to miss and stuff. So it's, I suppose at that point, it's hard not to overthink it because you've got to do it right. But equally, don't worry about the 
one thousand meter, whatever it is, or hill you've got to run up. Just, just be, when you get to the bottom of it, look up and power through. Just get through. If you walk, crawl, just get to the top. <laughs> yeah, and believe in your capabilities. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because like self belief goes a long way. It does. Well, actually, that something I wanted to ask you. So, looking back at the um, deeply positive impact that the Why We Run documentary had on. So, if anybody hasn't listened to that, Nathan will, you know, will drop the link in you. I mean, it was incredible. Like, I don't want to talk about it too much because it pissed me off that I wasn't there and I'm fed up with everyone. <laughs> it is just, I wish I was there so much. And every single guest we have on, and it, it's, I'm jealous. All right. I'm just going to say it. I'm jealous. Um, and, you talk about in when you're being interviewed in the one about you will not ask for help. Now, mm. have you come close to asking for help yet? And can you explain for anybody who hasn't seen the documentary what do you mean by that? So I haven't come close to asking for help yet. Um, <laughs> it's, I guess it's for me. I from a selfish point of view I guess and through growing up through the past and life it's relying on yourself to get you through it so yes okay I've got, I've got a crew here but ultimately no one's going to go run them 100 miles for you no you've got to go and do it and how dig a hole are you going to dig yourself how deep are you going to dig before you need to put a hand out and say mm. I need you to help me get through this race I, I mm. cannot do this by myself maybe from a physical point of view or a mental and I'm yeah. not I, I'm not there yet and it does that's not to say that I'm not trying the whole idea of GB Ultra's Grand Slam was it was never about the first hundred miler it was this compounding effect over months. And mm. what is that going to have on the body? Yeah. And how bad is it going to get at Beacons Way or Snowden where I'm going to be relying on a pacer to get me through this race because, I, because I'm mentally, physically broken? And I'm curious about it. Mm. What is it going to take? And not from a, I'm not going to go train for this and I'm going to go break myself because you're not doing any favors for yourself. Like I'm going to train, I'm going to prepare, but you still have that deep rooted question. Have I got what it takes? Mm. Yeah. And this is why I applied for the tunnel in, March next year. Oh, yeah. Which is it's stupid. It's mind boggling why someone would want to sign up to something like that. But it's running in its purest form. Yeah. There's there's no glorious mountains to look at to take your mind off the pain. There's no beauty. And it's you're faced with a choice. Every mile, you're faced with a choice. You have the light at the end of the tunnel. You have your chair. And you have everyone nice and warm, tucked up. And it's, I have to make that choice to turn around and go back into that dark, dingy piece of shit tunnel <laughs> that has violin music playing on repeat. And I haven't got to do this 50 times. I have to do this 200 times. Yeah. Like I'm not allowed support crew. I'm not allowed poles. I'm not allowed headphones. It is essentially you v you. Yeah, and, and yeah. like it sure. makes sorry. me sorry, sorry. this. Yeah, it makes me tingle with excitement just thinking about it. I was and I bricked it. I shit my pants when I got the email saying, um. Yeah, so you have to apply for it. You have to send off a running CV and why you feel as though you should be allowed to do this race. You have to have a prerequisite of 100 miles completed. And I hadn't done a single 100 yet. I hadn't gone and run Chester. And I 
And I basically said, look, you have nothing to lose by giving me this spot. Nothing to lose. I've got four hundreds, which means I have four opportunities to do the prerequisite for this race. And I pro I've written capital letters, I promise you, I will not fail. And then I two weeks, three weeks later, I got an email saying that you've been selected. And you know, I felt exactly how I felt at that free diving moment where I, this wave of emotion come over me, my heart's beating, and like I don't want to take that plunge. I, I don't want to go do this 20 meter free dive. And it was at that moment I knew I had to sign up. Yeah. Like you have to do this. It's, it's, I was going to come to that. So, yeah, well, whilst we're on that subject, might as well talk about it. Because, I mean, I was going to obviously ask your first event of next year. And, yeah, as you've just explained, for anybody who doesn't know about it, it's literally running a one mile long tunnel, turning around and running back for 200 times, 200 miles in the dark with all that. It, well, what you've said, it just sounded brutal. I mean, that's like, it messes with you on a whole nother level. Like you, you read into the effects of like prolonged darkness on you. Mm. <laughs> like you are going to be pushing yourself to such a limit where like it literally affects your what's called the circadian rhythm. So that's like the internal 24 hour biological clock. So all the behaviors that come with that. So your, your mood, your it can affect digestion, temperature control, everything. Like you in and out of that for 200 miles you're going to experience some wild shit. And if you have hallucinations, I want to know what they are. Like, they are going to be mental. <laughs> when I saw it, I was kind of jealous, but then equally I was also like, I don't think I could do it. I'd read about it, and then when I saw your post, I was like, I think... But, but you can, like, you, you can do it. And, and I'm a firm believer that everyone, anyone can do anything. Yeah, it's just about what are you willing to forego to get there? Yeah, yeah, it's true. And I mean, I suppose with what I'm doing with Ultra X next year, a lot of people would say that as well. I mean, yeah, that's insane. Yeah, I know. I know for a fact that I can, I will do it. If uh, there's just certain factors that obviously I need to tick off in order to get to the start lines, but yeah, it's uh, I'm saying that about the tunnels, but I'm going to be running. I mean, you run the 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 five day ultra of Wales. I'm going to be doing that in Tanzania, Wales, um, Nevada. Is it Jordan, Morocco? So I'm doing five Jordan. of them. Yeah. Which and I'm a pasty Welsh ginger boy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't, <laughs> Uh, you you like the cigarette in front of me and I'll burn. Do you know what I mean? So I, I'm not one of those guys who deserves or has any place being <laughs> in the Wadi Rum Desert or wherever it is that I'm going to be running and, and through mm -hmm. deserts in Nevada. But why not? Like, that doesn't mean to say I can't do it. I But, you know, so, yeah, I suppose it's just meant that I honestly, I, I genuinely, of all the stuff you're doing this year with these four 100 milers, I'm really excited to see you get on. But I am... I'm even more excited to see how you get on with this because I know you'll do it, but I just want to know when I'd love to get you back on here afterwards because I want to be like, tell us about the man. You need to tell me what you went through. And like, it's funny because you could come out in the back of him and be like, I loved it. It was, I didn't want to come out. I started to to feel like a bit of a bear in a cave. I wanted to hibernate in there. But Or you could say the complete opposite and that you hated every second. But either way, I want to know your experience, so it would be great to get you back on after that. Um, what just? Sorry, I was going to say something about you mentioned it before we went into the tunnel with these four one hundred milers. Do you see? Did you see you've got crew, or have you have like pieces, or what's the deal there? So you're allowed um, crew. So my partner follow me around, meet me at checkpoints. You're allowed pacers from fifty miles onwards. So okay. that's someone to just chill with, go do some running with. So I was pretty hard on the first hundred doing it by myself. Um, so like my coach was there and Megan was there, but in terms of paces, it was I want to I want to really experience this. Mm. Um, no distractions. I want to get sucked into all its rawity. 
Mm. And now that I've done it and I've experienced it, and it pays credit to my coach who doesn't get enough credit, but it was absolutely fine. Like, honestly, I finished the 100 and people were finishing and they were walking like a penguin as you do and really, really struggling. And I was absolutely fine. I jumped in the shower, showered myself off. We went Nando's, went and had a Nando's and then drove home. And I was out walking, walking my dog for an hour and a half the following day. And it was mind boggling how the body can can withstand that amount of impact over 28 hours and don't get me wrong I was smart I didn't as much as I wanted to go crazy Luke was slow down slow down slow down because you're not training for the first one essentially I went into the first one underdone I didn't go in at peak fitness it was we're now going to try and build Mm. on this and I finished it. I felt great in probably the best possible case, best case scenario. Yeah. And it was best case scenario. No injuries, no niggles. I didn't have to worry about seeing an osteopath or a physiotherapist at the end. It was right. I can just focus on recovery now. And that goes down to the training that I've had. And I, I probably would say I'm a difficult person to coach. Because I, I'm always like, more is more. Like, I want more. Like, I want to run more. I want to do more. I haven't done enough. And we sort of back and forth of less is more. So now going into the next hundreds, I've got some friends coming up to Scotland with me. They're going to come run with me from 50 miles onwards, 55 miles onwards, drop in, drop out. Uh, Lewis, who's got UTMB in August, he's going to come run some of Beacon's Way. Uh, Will from the Adventurers Athletes podcast is going to come support. So now it's, okay, I've run 100 miles. Let's have some fun. Yeah. Let's have some fun. Let's bring some people on board and um, have that community that running brings. Surround yeah, yourself with friends and um, let them come have a bit of experience of what you're going through and they're going to see a different side of you, a different version. They're going to see you suffer and struggle and be happy about it because there won't be a moment in any of these races where I'm suffering and I'm going to hate it. No. Because I've actively seeked this out. I've chosen this. Mm. And I've chosen it for myself. So how can I hate it? How can I hate myself and hate this choice? Yeah. That you'd true. be doing a you'd be doing a disservice to the challenge. Yeah. Do you think you've kind of you've been a bit spoiled though, Nate? Because you did it was such it was the best case scenario coming out of Chester. Do, do you think like like obviously you can only hope that all of them end like that? Who knows? But uh you kind of been a bit spoiled, haven't you? Because you've got that expectation now where you're like, maybe I'll feel like that every time. But realistically, I mean... Realistically, I'm expecting to get to mile 60 of Scotland and be in a world of hurt. Yeah. I, I can't wait. <laughs> like, honestly, that is why we go into these challenges. How bad is it going to get before we start second guessing ourselves Mm. yeah and you're given a choice do you stop do you carry on how bad is it got to get before you stop yeah and that's what these challenges are about but it's taking a step back and just looking up look at where i am look at what i get to do yeah. Look who I'm surrounded by. I chose this. Yeah. How can I stop? How can I stop now? Mm. And that is a yeah. huge contrast between the mountains and the beauty in the tunnel. Oh. You, they're two different challenges in their own right. Uh, yeah. Yes, the tunnel's flat, but it's 
dark and it's shit. Scotland, Wales, I'm going to be surrounded by a beautiful fam family and friends. I'm going to be in the mountains. And all I've got to do is put one foot in front of each other. All I've got to do is put one foot in front of the other. Yeah, and keep moving. Yeah. And keep moving. Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? It's, uh, I'm very excited for you. I'd like to say I'd like come out and try and join you on some of the Beacons Way. I'll have to see. I mean, I've got... When is it? Oh, when is the Beacons Way? When? August, you said. 27th. 27th of July. 27th of July. Oh, right, that's bang smack. Because I'm going to be going down with uh, Nath at some point to try and help them on his... World's coastal path as well, but uh, if I can't make it, mate, we'll all be watching. Don't you worry and supporting you. But um, yeah, it's incredible. It's... Yeah, I'll be in Cardigan Bay by then, hopefully. Oh, there we are, yeah. hopefully. Um, I just want to ask you. When I was reading through your Instagram and everything as well, and various things, it says you've done three two hundred and fifty kilometer multi stage ultras. So obviously, I know one of them was the Why We Run. The other one was the Wales. One wasn't it the Ultra X. What was the yeah, other one? Yeah, so I. So I've done two why we run. Oh, of course you have. Yeah, yeah. Of course you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you seen the so, first documentary release? No. No, I haven't. I'll, I'll post a link as well, because on the that last was day, Grant was injured, so we had to walk the whole day. And he ended up coming in like last on the final day. But it was just such a moment. And I was in the same boat last year. And that <laughs> that was a driving force for me, remembering Grant last year. Well, so the funny story about that is, so I met Lewis at uh, Ultra X Wales and we'd stayed in touch. We got on really well in Wales. There was some good competition between the pair of us, some good banter. And I was going away and the dates that were set weren't the original dates. And I was going away for four weeks with my partner to Southeast Asia. And... Lewis dropped me a message and he said, all oh, right, the dates have changed. It's the day after you get back from Southeast Asia. Now, again, opportunity. I've got the opportunity to go run for Big Moose, go run with a bunch of like-minded people in November in what's potentially going to be the shittiest weather imaginable <laughs> in Bath. And... I'm going to enjoy it. Now, the mistake I made, which I still do sort of make the mistake of making, is desensitizing myself. So I'd run Ultra X Wales. I'd forgotten how bad Ultra X Wales was. Um, I, I finished Ultra X Wales in pieces. Um, feet were battered, legs were battered. But I was like, that's fine, it's fine. I can run 250K. So I messaged Lewis back and I said, yes, I'm in. I landed from Heathrow in the morning, drove home, swapped my suitcase for my running bag that I'd already pre-packed a month before. And I hadn't done any training in Southeast Asia. I'd done a little bit of running. But I was like, it's fine. I, I can go run 250K. It's not a race. And I went there and... Lewis was doing the evening briefing the day before and I was in the tent sound asleep at seven o'clock at night trying to get over my jet lag. It was, it was horrendous. So I managed day one and day two absolutely fine. Day three, my right ITB flared up. And if anyone's had it, it's this shooting pain on the side of your hip and it doesn't go away. And if you're not careful, it goes into you, basically your butt. So I started running differently to compensate for my right ITB. Day three took me, well, I come in last day three. And it was suffering in its most beautiful form. Like, it was horrendous. And I started getting ITB pains on my left leg. So... Day four come around, and I knew I was going to be hobbling most of day four. Now, Jenny, the osteopath, and so I'd done one loop, and I was hobbling, and now my shin started to hurt because you're changing your running gait to compensate, and it's my ITBs are throbbing. So 
I'm going to run differently, but now it's causing my shins to hurt. And I was laying down and there was massage in my ITBs and they said, like, stop. And I turned around and said, what's the worst that can happen? What's the, like, can it snap? And they said, no. I said, that's the only answer I need then. So got back up. I went back out there. Day four took me 14 hours of just hobbling, hobbling around this shitty little loop. And, you know, the funny thing is, is I got to the canal in the pitch black. I'd been out for hours. I'd been out for hours. I had my headphones in and it was starting to piss down the rain. And I felt this overwhelming sense of peace. And I took my I took my earphones out and I and I was just hobbling along the canal, feeling the rain along my face. And I stood there for a moment. I just closed my eyes. And I was like, This is beautiful. And it was at that moment I was like, I am fucking indestructible. <laughs> yeah as corny as it sounds as as crazy as it sounds i was like i will not break under these circumstances like you will not break me and another hour passed and lewis messaged me uh probably like just checking in to see if i was okay because i've been out for hours and i messaged him back and i just put i love this shit i love it and I went back, and if you've seen the video, Nathan, you've seen it, like, played a song, and, like, they was all waiting. And, like, I was hobbling in, sobbing a little bit, because you was just surrounded by this unconditional love. Mm. No one gave a shit. Everyone just wanted to see you succeed. Mm. And I went back to the hotel that night, in absolute bits. I got up Friday. I'd already completed it. I'd already completed it in my head. And I didn't care how long it was going to take. And I went back out there and I finished the last two laps. I ended up on crutches um, afterwards because my shins were absolutely shot to pieces. My ITBs were horrendous. And it took it put me out of running for five months. I did, did not have a stress fractures or anything. Or stress like fracture in my leg? right leg. Stress fracture in my right leg, um, and my IT beads. And I did not run pain free for five months. Wow! And I was in bits. Like in hindsight, you know, in hindsight, I'd do it all again because it taught me so much about myself and so much about what we are capable of as people. If, if we're surrounded by the, the, the right people, and, and this goes back to work, like you're surrounded by these this environment, you're surrounded in this environment that is where these people are bringing you down. Mm. But then uh, while you run, you're surrounded by these people that just want to lift you up. Yeah. And they want to see you succeed. And yeah, okay, granted, I was told to stop. But I still had that choice. The, ch the choice was still my own. Mm. And I was able to make it. And from that, was it opened up a world of opportunity. I managed to go do a double Ironman. Four weeks later from finishing a double Ironman, I went and ran the second Wari run. And I finished the second Wari run, and it was a piece of cake. <laughs> um because of that conditioning, because of the conditioning yeah. I'd had all year from the bike, the swimming, the running, and it just paid dividends mm. on, the, uh, on the second while we run. And I went away again, me and my partner went to Bali for, for five weeks and went and hiked some in, in, uh, amazing mountains. And sort of, this is where I learned rest is important because it's easy to get carried away and look at the next challenge. But I made this active choice. I went to Bali and it was like, right, I'm gone. I'm capitalizing on, on why we run and I'm going to go run 10 miles every other day. And my coach messaged me and he said, what the fuck are you doing? Chill out. 
Like, you've just <laughs> gone and done this. Um, chill out. So I took my watch off. Uh, it was eye-opening. Like, we get lost in data. We get lost in whoop and Garmin and step counting. And I'd forgotten what it was to live without it. Mm. And took the watch off, took everything off, didn't care. Like, my body had just allowed me to go run 250K, scot free. What are you worrying about? Take the time off and, mm. like, stay active. I was still, like, I went to Komodo Island and I went scuba diving. And me and my partner went and hiked Mount Rinjani, which was brutal. Like, it was brutal. And we had the best time ever. And that was because I was able to just switch off from it all. Yeah. And what followed from that was being able to come back and still love running. Mad. The um, you mentioned a few times a double Ironman, mate. Obviously, you've never when I read into you've never even done a half Ironman. No, no. So, <laughs> what made you go from not even doing a half Ironman? You know, not really being that comfortable swimming, having to learn to swim in a pool and all that. To Couldn't then swim. What you couldn't swim, you couldn't, couldn't swim yeah, couldn't. to go yeah, into doing swim. that, and, and and also, you know, for the people who don't know, this this was also in Snowdon, so the highest mountain in England and Wales. Yeah. So it took you all yeah. 38 hours. So, talk me through a bit what how far was the swim and everything, and, and like, so the swim was, was 8k, the 8K. bike was 372. And the run was 85k with Mount Snowden to begin with. And it was amazing. It was amazing. I had a conversation with, so this was when I was looking for a coach. Mm. And Luke is Lewis's old coach. He trained uh, Lewis for his 5250s. I met him at the first YB run. And we had a conversation. He was sceptical. And for me, I don't like being told I can't do something. <laughs> it just, it gripes me because I've been told I can't do something for so long. Like I was told I couldn't go run a sub three. Then I was told you couldn't go do it twice a week apart. And it was like, no, you fucking can. Like you can do this stuff. And we had a conversation and I said, I want to do the double. And he was um in and ah in. And I said, this isn't up for discussion. Like, I want to do the double and it's your job to get me there. And after a few conversations, I was still injured at this point as well. I hadn't done any running. I had a conversation about swimming and I'd done two... I'd done like three cycling events the year before. The the worst one was Dragons Ride in Wales in the Brecon Beacons. It was horrendous. Took me 12 and a half hours. It was disgusting. Um, but I had no context. I had no context of what it felt like cycling for 200, for 20 plus hours. I had no, I hadn't swum. But all I knew was I can run. Like I can run. And for me, that was all that mattered. So we come to a plan and it was, okay, we're going to get you in the pool twice a week. We're going to get you on the bike. And I don't know if you remember, but last summer was the worst summer ever. Mm. It pissed down. And I thought, oh, it's going to be amazing. I'm going to get incredible cycling time, saddle time in the in the summer. I changed so many punctures. <laughs> It was unreal. I, there's a video on my phone of me screaming just through sheer frustration because I don't like treadmill running. I do not like sitting on a turbo. I don't like sitting on a watt bike. I will always pick the outdoors regardless of the weather. So when you wake up and it's, oh, I've got to go do a four-hour bike ride in the pissing rain. So like, oh. You've got to go do four hours of bike ride in the pissing rain and just get on with it. Just go do it. And open water season come, put a wetsuit on, and I loved it. 
being able to just switch off. Like I wasn't a particular, I'm not a fast swimmer. My swimming never got any quicker over the training period. I was always sitting at around two minutes, two minutes, 10 for a hundred meters, but I could maintain that for ages. Uh, and I felt happy doing so. And the swim is what's always put me off applying for an Ironman because mm. I'm, I, well, because I couldn't do it and I was petrified of doing it. I was petrified of drowning. And again, that's why I had to sign up. It was like, this is going to force you to get better. This is going to force you to do something you don't want to do. And as the months progressed, I just, I met up with Lewis. Lewis is a phenomenal swimmer. We've done some open water swims together. Done so, i done so much cycling. This is another thing with ultra running is it's very lonely. So in my seven months of training, i done two rides with someone and two open water swims with Lewis and maybe a few long runs. The, rest, the seven months I was by myself. And mm. I'm a big believer in visualization. Mm. So when you're suffering and you're struggling, just like, just visualize that finish line and what that finish line is going to feel like. That's what you're here for. This is why you're training. Because without mm. this, you're not going to get there. Or you're going to get there, but you are not going to enjoy it. You're mm. going to get halfway through that race and doubts are going to start flooding in. And that's not to say that it didn't happen. Even with all the preparation I had leading up to the double. Again, I was like, I haven't done enough. I haven't done enough swimming. I haven't done enough cycling. I haven't done enough running. And a little tip we'd done on training peaks was we compiled all the distances. And I'd cycled like 6,000 kilometers over the course of the year leading into the double. I'd swum hundreds of kilometers. I'd run probably not as much as I wanted to, but I'd run loads. I'd been to South Korea. Um, I went and ran along their national park. I'd done Tenny Fan. Mm. And we feel like we would lose this fitness. We feel like we've lost it a few weeks later but we haven't it's there it's in the legs the the swimming's there and it's it's getting the effects of weeks and weeks and weeks of training and you know i enjoyed the swim so much it was gorgeous we funny enough we'd had a heat wave that weekend mm -hmm. so it was super warm the temperature was 19 degrees in the lake it was still and it was three hours of swimming there was wow. just, there was just, okay, I've just got to swim for three hours. And in my idea, I'd, I'd had three hours. What I wasn't prepared for was the bike. Mm. The bike was just a different beast altogether. Um, it was this loop, 40, 40 K loop. And I don't know if you'd know Snowden, but you've got Penny Pass. And mm. it's, Six six kilometers long. I can't remember the exact details. Six point four kilometer climb, and you have to do it eight times, and you get real fucking comfy on that climb. And I remember getting into the night section. Must be about one in the morning, and. By this time, only 20-odd people had signed up to the double. All the all the Iron Men had finished. All the halves had finished. And you've only got the doubles up uh, and the triples. And I just remember seeing these dots, these headlights in the distance in Penny Pass because it does like a U-shape on itself and it goes back on itself. And you can see the distance. And I don't know if you know Sean Conway. Yeah. Um, he was doing the double as well. Oh, that's cool. And I managed to have an amazing conversation with him. And it's dangerous because when you have conversations with people like this and you feed off of it, it just, your brain starts firing and it's like, oh my God, like I want to do all these crazy things. And I remember on the sixth lap, 
feeling like I didn't belong there. I was mm. tired. I was suffering. And it was, you, you start having these doubts. Like, I don't belong here. Like, who am I kidding? Like, I don't deserve to be riding next to Sean Conway, world record holder. And it was very demoralizing. Mm. But again, you just crack on. What it's, what kept you going? What kept your your spirits going? I gotta do it. <laughs> that, that, it is so. But it's just I have to do this. I have to do it, and I have this mental block. Um, I, earlier that year, I'll get back to the double. But earlier that year, me and my partner had signed up to a hundred mile bike ride, mm. and my thread on my pedals had gone. So you, so the pedal had worked itself loose. I technically couldn't finish the race. My bike was busted. You couldn't put the pedal back on. I'm, I made my partner get off her bike. I swapped the pedals over and I was like, I'm going to finish the race. You've got to go back to the start line with the man in the truck. Yeah. I, I just I had that, that blog, like it made me feel physically sick knowing that I wasn't wasn't going to be able to finish this race. Uh, and my partner, as lovely as she was, she was suffering anyway and didn't want to do it. Uh, so it was perfect. I, I said she manifested it. She wanted the race to end uh, because she was suffering. My bike broke, so we swapped them. And like I gunned it to the finish line. The same thing with a double. It was, I have to do this. Yeah. I have to prove it to myself that I can do this. And you I broke it down. I broke everything down into half mar into half iron man. So if you do two loops of the lake, it's okay, I've done a half iron man. You do another two, okay, I've done a full, I've got a full left. I do two more, I've only got a half left. The same with the bike. Eight loops, break it down into twos. I got off the bike. After 21 hours, pretty beat up. Like I got on it at half 10 Saturday morning and I got off it at half 7 Sunday morning. <laughs> I wanted to throw the bike in the river. And I hadn't actually been out on my bike since last weekend when I went out on it with Lewis. So, so that's like seven months of no cycling. Because I had this mental block of just fuck this bike. Like, I've had enough of it. As gorgeous as the bike is, as much as I loved it, I did not want to get back on it. <laughs> but, but once I got off the bike, you had to go see the medic and you had to Callum, who was at Why We Run. So this is another thing with running and the community and its beauty, is I hadn't met Callum before the double and I put a post out because I I found out that it was compulsory to have someone hike Mount Snowden with you for safety reasons. So I put a post out on Instagram and I said, look, I need someone to come hike with me. I couldn't take Megan because she had been driving around in the car all night, following me around, um, which was another thing. You had to have someone follow you in the night section because there was no support crew or everyone had gone home or the organizers had gone home. So someone had to follow you in a car at checkpoints and just make sure you was okay. So I put an Instagram post out and Callum reached out and was like, I'd love nothing more than to come hike Snowden with you. So he joined me in the morning. I had Shane from the first while we run. Uh, Louise, who I hadn't even met before, messaged and her family member was also doing the double. So again, it just brought all these people together that had never met each other but they was hmm. willing to support one another. They was willing to support a stranger do this crazy challenge. Amazing. And small world, isn't it, as well? A small world. And it was amazing. And I hiked up Snowden. And I, and I was sort of shuffling. And everyone joined me for the loop. So it's like a five-mile loop that you'd have to repeat eight times. And... I got to, I was three loops out and darkness had come. And it reminded me of why we run along the canal. 
And I had this wave of energy come over me. And I said to Megan, look, I just, I don't want anyone with me now. Like I want to go and soak this up for myself and appreciate and love myself and what my body's allowed me to do. And then doubts of, I don't belong here on the bike completely flipped on the run because it was like, I know how to run. I know what tired, broken legs feel like running. Mm. I'm tired, but my legs ain't broken. Like, mm. let's fucking, let's finish this. And mm. my lap times got quicker for the last three. It was like an hour and nine, an hour and four, and an hour and one minute was my, it was my fastest lap. And I finished and well, you've seen the video, like, I fucking just let out this scream. Like this euphoric st- scream of like, wow, man. Like I've been going for 38 hours and I feel amazing. Mm. It was short-lived because when I finished, I went and sat down on the chair and Megan come like five minutes later waking me up. She's like, babe, we've got to go. We've got to go. <laughs> so I finished and all the adrenaline had finished. And, um, yeah, then the tiredness caught up on me. But I, I woke up the following day and felt fine. Like, a bit achy, upper back hurt a little bit, but I was walking fine. And I rung Luke up and I said, mate, we should have gone for the triple. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, there's that, that echo of disappointment of, could I have pushed for the triple? And I was gutted because I'd finished and I'd slept and I'd borrowed my auntie and uncle's camper van, their motorhome. And we drove, um, I drove out of the car park and I see a guy who was still going, who was doing the triple. And, and I just felt this world of pride in him. of just mm. like, man, you are something special. Like mm. I've been a bed. I've had a. I've been asleep. I've eaten. I feel fine, and you're still grafting. Was um was Sean doing the triple? No, Sean was doing the double as well. Did you see it? Um, hundred and five iron full Ironmans in yeah. the five days, didn't he? Yeah, uh, and he was still recovering at the double. Um, as much joy as I'd like to say that I beat him. It was like it was never a competition, and and this is the beautiful thing with ultras. Depending on how you enter them, whether it's for performance or for yourself, it's with the marathons and the halves. When I was sort of com- competing for a time, you always asked that question: "Oh, would you do it?" In? Yeah. No one gives a fuck when you run a fifty k ultra. They're like, "Oh my god, you went and ran a fifty k ultra. That's amazing. Well done." No one cares. The double, it alleviated that pressure. Mm. of, And there were so many Ironmen there that were doing the event. And at the kit check, everyone's talking about how fast they've done an Ironman. They're all talking about their fastest swim, bike, run. Like, what watts are they pulling from the bike? I couldn't give a fuck. (laughs) Like, I'm... at that phase of my life where it was all about the length and the endurance of what could I do for myself. That's not to say that in the future I might, I I'm intrigued to go back into performance and speed work. But for now I enjoy the mental struggle that ultra brings. Mm. Well, I'm curious, mate. Um, what is, Tell us your some bucket list or some crazy challenges you've got lined up. Because I know for a fact you've got some bottled away there. And me and Nathan and anybody listening, you know, we, <laughs> you're a bit of a badass. So I want to know what numbers you've got lined up. So there's a few I would like to do next year. There's the tunnel. Yeah. Uh, there's Tour de Giants, which is a 200 mile ultra in Italy. Yeah. I think. I'd be pushing it if I'd done any more than two sort of two hundreds in a calendar year, depending on, on how the body feels. 
Um, I actually met someone today doing that. Tour de the Tour de jo- yeah. yeah. It's, it's absolutely brutal but spectacular. And that's why I really want to do it because you're going from the tunnel, which is completely derelict and isolate, to Tour de Giants, which is just spectacular. Mm. Um, so it's just two different contrasts. I'd like to... I'd really like to do the jog or juggle with the three peaks. Mm. Mm. Which is what? Just, is that what Imogen's just done? Yeah, so Imogen's yeah. done the three peaks, but separately. I would like to combine them. Oh, okay. Mm. Where you, yeah, that is something that has been an idea that I've been flirting with for a while. But again, I'm still, I only started running in 2022. Yeah. Still very young in in terms of the ultra running world. I'm still very naive and overestimate my capabilities, if you yeah. will. That self-belief yeah. is so powerful that I almost have to check myself. <laughs> and and I think social media can be guilty of it as well. It feeds yeah. it because yeah. we're we're led to believe that people are doing it every weekend and people are running 50Ks every day and it distorts reality. Mm. It does. And it's yeah. and it's sort of checking that. Like we see people on holiday all the time and but you don't see the day-to-day grind. You don't see the day-to-day nine to five because mm. no one really shares it. Everyone just shares these spectacular achievements. Yeah. And I think Nathan as well going into Wales, you should you really need to share the shit. Mm. Because yeah. it's easy to look at someone running a marathon and it makes it so accessible. Oh yeah, I could go run a marathon. But we never see the 5 a.m. wake ups, the 8 p.m. runs that they've dedicated their time to and the sacrifices they've made to get to that marathon. Mm, and the process, like it's, it's yeah. all about you see, like you know, the people, um, letting out, like you said, your first screams as they cross the finish line, they don't see the 38 hours of suffering that they went through prior to that. And yeah, it's this that's true, that isn't it? Because when we had, um, was it Mark on Nath, Mark Lewis, was that his name again? I forgot, is that his name? Yeah, Mark, um, I think yeah. Leon spoke about it as well, didn't he? He's, he yeah. was more, um proud of the process to get him to the start line of joggle and him actually doing joggle. Yeah. And Mark said to make sure that if you're going to film and document the Wales coastal path or whatever it is you do. Yeah. Don't, don't turn the camera off when you're at your Suffering, lowest. Yeah, because, yeah. because that's just shit that people need to see because it ain't it's all real. unicorns and butterflies. It is hot. You are putting yourself in such a vulnerable position where you are physically crying in pain. Uh, both you know and mentally and um, you need people to be like yeah it's great to do don't get me wrong it's an increasing incredible uh, opportunity but I am fully aware I'm, I'm going to be heard and I want you to see that because um, in fact you mentioned Nate, that your son is going to be joining you for a lot of it because you want him to see you suffer because that's life yeah I do yeah and uh, right. yesterday all these, you, you wouldn't stop talking about it you so yeah. hyped for it He's um, he's teaching now, listens to the podcast. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. See, that's great. Oh, we've got to stop. Better stop swearing then. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you'll, you'll know where uh, my boy gets his swearing from then. Oops. Oops, yeah. Oh, yeah. shit. But it's, but it's, it's all sports um, exactly. as well. I think we're very desensitised uh, desensitized to it. And I get there. And the crazy thing is, is I went and ran a half marathon at Reading last weekend and it was a huge reality check of hundreds of people suffering on a half marathon and it was a brutally hot day there was people passed out on patches of grass where they'd overheat hadn't drunk a lot paramedics about and it was this is normal like this is actually normal what we're doing and what we're trying to accomplish isn't no, exactly. And yeah, I think we often forget about like the five and ten k's and how hard it was as as we were beginning our running journeys, don't we? Yeah, yeah. Um, I did. Um, 
I entered the Cardiff Half Marathon last year, and uh, it was like you said, it's a half marathon, and I'm not. I'm, I would never take it away from half marathon distance because it's still, you know, you're out there, you're doing it. Doesn't matter if it's five k or five hundred k, whatever. I got respect for you, and like I said, a friend of mine was like, "Well, oh, I can give you a free entry because it's through his work," and I was like, "Oh yeah, go on in. Why not? I'll do it." And it broke me a little bit just because it was in October, but it was a really humid day. Mm. I went in there, not cocky, but I was like, oh, I can do this. I've run much further distances on a regular basis. That's like a training run for me. Mm -mm. That was a slap across the face. And it just, it give, you need those moments to just be like, like, don't get me wrong, I wasn't hurt. And afterwards or anything, I was crossed the line, enjoyed it. But I mean, it was the humidity and everything. And I was like, shit, that was a reality check. Like, Raining in a bit, but you just, it's, it's still raining 13 miles in a, in a hot temperature and surrounded by people who are doing wonderful things. And I think we need that in life, don't we? So um, it's, it's, yeah, it's easy. easy to lose sight of and, and it's easy to forget where we've come from. Yeah, exactly. We, ne we're, we, we never look back. We're always looking forward. Like, yeah. what's next? What's, ne what's next? And almost even pish posh in it like oh what do i want to go run a half marathon for um mm. and losing sight of that and i have actually was one of the best runs uh it was my partner's longest run because she was coming back from injury so we got to enjoy that together there was no time constraints it was just remembering the beauty of running and running with people running with loved ones and exactly. it's hard because Nathan, you'll know, and and you'll know that the training can be very lonely and isolate. Oh God, yeah. And we yeah. get in our own heads, and we spend so much time by ourselves that I think it, why we run as well is so important to sort of check back into that, like the community and the people. And Zigzag is a company, sort of around Suffolk, and they do. I sort of. They do 5K loops. And they was huge into me pushing myself because there was never any sort of limit on distance. Like you could sign up to a half marathon, but if you didn't feel good on the day, you could drop it down to 10K, 5K. If you felt good, you could up it to a marathon. And so many people would feel good and just go, oh, yeah, I'm going to push it today. I'm going to go that little bit further. And yeah. now the, the community for ZigZag is huge because it's so family orientated it's so community led that yeah. people are just pushing it that little bit further and like whether it's 5k or even a kilometer it's huge and we should really relish that and take pride in it i have to turn my video off a sec guys because uh my battery is on one percent i've just realized what's going on what's going on the battery's about Amateur. to die. <laughs> yeah how much um, here, definitely. But um, yeah, mate. I think um, unless uh, you've got anything else you want to ask me, I think um. So when is is why we run this year, Grant? Is am I going? No. When is it? Oh, it's the twenty third of September. Is there any places the left? If people are interested. Yes. Yes, there are. Pe yes, there are some. There's some spaces left. Um, not many though. Uh, right. Not many. They they have been filling up, and I encourage. If like, it's life changing. <laughs> yeah, it's life changing, and yeah. you you have nothing to lose by signing up, and everything to gain. Yeah, yeah. there's no pressure on you doing it. It's 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 your no. own personal challenge. Yeah, yeah. and there you're going to be surrounded by a world of people that. They're going to encourage that they're going to come run laps with you if you're struggling. You can lean on each other. For me, it was life changing. I love the community. I love Lewis. I love Dan, So, Jen, you, everyone we met at the second one. Everyone keeps in touch and everyone's just wanting everyone to do better. And it's just such a beautiful environment. Mm. I agree. Yeah, I'd love to. If I can, I will. I will. Um, but uh, it, yeah, it's, it looks incredible. And I'm, again, very jealous I've not made previous ones. And in fact, I'm going to go back and watch the first one because I've not watched that one But uh, and see you hobble over that line, Grant. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, well, I mean, it's in, 
like through encouragement as well it's encouraged me to become a coach and help yeah. people realize that with a little bit of self belief you can go a long way yeah yeah definitely uh, and i love it encourage people to realize their full potential isn't it because like mm. you said with that zigzag thing they enter the race sink and they're only going to do half and then they realize actually i can keep going here yeah? and give us that opportunity to to yeah that, that mindset so yeah it's uh yeah, yeah, and it's, it's getting amazing. comfortable and it's encouraging you to <clears throat> book that holiday, go on that adventure, go and experience life in all its glory. Yeah. Hell yeah. Absolutely. Not get not get caught up in the day to day monotony of work because there's a whole world out there that needs experiencing and uh, so many people and for me I some of the best experiences were just turning up at a hostel as a complete stranger and just just meeting people and that in, that gave me the confidence to go to Ultra X Wild yeah yeah um, and just don't be shy because you never know what it's going to lead to take that leap of faith absolutely awesome. be curious be curious, yeah. Yeah, and be curious to fail because there is no failing if you get up the next day and try again. All there is is experience gained. Yeah. Hell yeah. Absolutely. And I said I think that's probably a good point to leave it at that, mate. Be curious and yeah. Yeah. To up and be open to failure as well. Because you're not failing if you try. You're failing if you don't get to that point where you even press enter and end of the race. Um, but you're not failing mm. if you give it a go. So yeah, thank you, man. Yeah. I mean, genuinely, this is um, it's the first time I've had a proper chat with you because, like I said, it was all very busy and stuff at the Big Moose event. And I know you've spoken to Nate a lot more, but just I want to say from me personally as well, like, thank you so much for coming on here and chatting. It's, you're a very, very inspirational guy, mate. You've been doing this, you know, for a couple of years. And what you've achieved already is monumental like there's people in life that have never achieved half of what you have in, in a short time uh, and um, it's you know talking about the whole journey you've been through and your relationship with pain and your relationship with discomfort and what you've come where you've come from to where you are it's an absolute pleasure to see that you're thriving mate and you've found your your calling so to speak for want of a better word and um, I am genuinely excited as i'm sure nathan is and everyone who's listening to see what you've got in store for us for the rest of your life because yeah man you're, you're, you're bloody yeah you're smashing it and uh thank you so much for taking the time and coming on here to talk to us stupid welsh lads and uh let's hope we can get some miles together in the future mate definitely thank you it'd be a pleasure and thank you for having me uh i was bricking it at the beginning uh ah, you but... you did awesome you're so bloody inspiring your whole attitude towards just life is just it's amazing. It is. It's you. Your whole, yeah. you. you do. You've got that attitude, mate. You've got that. You've got the right attitude to do anything, and you've already proven that in a, in a matter of two years or whatever it is. So yeah, let's let's uh, keep moving forward. I cannot wait to see what you do following these three remaining one hundreds and and the tunnel next year. And uh, dead excited, mate. Dead excited. So thank you again, mate. Honestly from both of us and um yeah let's catch up again soon and then and uh we'll keep well we'll keep our eyes peeled for for the remaining challenges for the rest of this year and post debate and everything and yeah thanks again yeah man. thank you and nathan i will be down to come share some trials with you that is a promise awesome can't wait yeah, it's going to be it's exciting good. thank you both yeah. thank you honestly for having me on it's been a it's pleasure been Thank you, Grant. Enjoy. It's been a pleasure, mate. Thanks ever so much, bye. mate. Enjoy the rest of your night. Bye. Take care, bud. Bye-bye. Bye. Fucking hell, what a man. I know. He's sad. He was amazing, isn't he? Ridiculous. Ridiculous. <laughs> He's just got so much love and admiration for everyone who just puts him through, himself through shit. Amazing. Yeah. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Nothing but respect for him, man. Fair play. I, can't I never see him not him. smiling. No, I can't wait to go out running with him because he'll be one of those guys, you know, you'll be 10 miles into a run and by the end of it, you'll want to run another fucking 100. Mental. What a man. Fair play to him in such a short time. He's obviously got that. It's just built in him, and he? He's got that drive. Yeah. Like, fair play. Yeah. 
Wicked. Thank you so much, guys. Before we end, Nathan, I just really want to say thank you so much for tuning in and supporting the Just Run podcast. Obviously, we've had some incredible guests, super inspiring people. You know, Grant is no exception if you've listened to this episode. Um, we're just having so much fun talking to these uh, really great people, and we've got so many more guests lined up now um, from all over the world, including listeners all over the world. So please, you make this possible by liking, subscribing, and listening. So keep doing it, and uh, yeah. We'll keep providing the content. So thanks ever so much for listening, guys. And yeah, cheers. Bye. Bye.